Hey, it's almost nine o'clock and we're going to go ahead and get started with tonight's webinar with um, Tech Talks with Lucy. This is our second webinar and I'm glad to have Brittany joining me tonight and we're supposed to have about 20 other people so hopefully they'll drop in uh, in the next few minutes. Otherwise, uh, everyone can catch the recordings um, uh, that I will post to Google Classroom when we're done. So um, thanks for coming everyone and let's get this party started. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you and kind of go through some of the basic information that we covered last week just to review. We have a survey for Tech Talk participants and I'd love to have your, uh, you know, I'd love to have some information from you so that we can plan for these future sessions um, in a more customized way. So when you have time, please take the survey at bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y slash capital T Tech capital T talks, capital S survey, and uh, that information will be put to good use. You can access these slides also through a bit.ly link. It's bit.ly slash tech talks with Lucy too. And these will also be posted in our Google Classroom that you can access and you can access them anytime and copy them to your own, your own uh, Google Drive if you want to do that. So uh, these are uh, standing resources for Rio Salado students and anyone else who wants to attend these seminars, and we're so happy um, to have you here tonight. So tonight we're going to be talking about supercharging your Google Chrome browser, which is something that was not particularly exciting to participants last week when we looked at our survey. And I think it's because people don't know what they can do in Chrome. And so tonight might be life-changing for you if you've never really dug into Google Chrome and its extensions. So. Um, it's a little bit more exciting than you might think it might be, and it's going to, uh, these tips and tricks I'm going to teach you tonight will help you improve your productivity and efficiency in your classroom. We want to thank Rio Salado College for putting this together. Uh, it, this is an ongoing series that will be lasting between now and the end of August, so lots of uh, online virtual professional development for you, courtesy of them. Uh, my name is Lucy Gray, and I'm based here in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I do have some Arizona connections. I was engaged in uh, the Desert Botanical Garden, and I don't think I told everyone last week, I also, uh, my husband owns a piece of property in Casa Grande that he inherited from his dad. It was, uh, it's kind of a ghost town where this property is. He, um, uh, his dad bought this back in the 50s or 60s uh, when it was booming out there, and then it, be, it then this property wasn't developed. So we have a lot, and I guess we'll retire there one day. Um, but yes, so I'm here in Chicago. I'm a former classroom teacher and technology coach. I'm now a consultant and adjunct professor at National Lewis University in Chicago. And I am your personal tech coach now for the next several months. You can find me on Twitter. My handle is Elementus. And follow me, I'm always pushing out great stuff. And I'm using the hashtag EdRising at Rio to um, put out content that I think is useful to this community. So look for resources with that hashtag um, when you search on Twitter. You can always find me on uh, Gmail too if you need to get hold of me uh, at lms at gmail.com and my LinkedIn profile is there for you too if you want more information about what I do. If you haven't introduced yourself, I'd love for you to go to this Padlet and uh, see who's been here before. Oops, let me go back to it. I'll, I'll get the link out and put it in the chat. Uh, let's see. Here is the link. And I will put it in the chat for all to see. And you can create a sticky note on this Padlet. I'll show you what it looks like. This is one of my favorite tools for education. And uh, these are people who attended last week, and I left some notes for people. Uh, if you're new to this, you may want to uh, double-click on the board here, and a note should pop up that you can put your name in the title and then write a few things about yourself there to introduce yourself to the rest of the group. So if you are, uh, if you are uh, doing several things at once and you want to do that while we're talking tonight, while this presentation is going on, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, so introductions go on that Padlet. 
And we're going to use Padlet again tonight, and I'll go over that. And, and this is the actual thing that we were going to do if we had a big group, but we don't have a big group. So uh, this is another Padlet that I put up as our icebreaker for tonight on what your favorite personal use of technology is. And since we have a really small group, I think I'm going to skip that right now. But you can do it, and we can take a look at it next week if you put your um, – We'll, we'll do this icebreaker again. Hopefully we'll have more people the next time we do this. So feel free to also go to that Padlet. It's padlet.com slash LMNS slash Tech Talk 2. And you can make a sticky note and tell us what your favorite uses of technology are on a personal level. Are you a Netflix addict? Do you like to uh, make things and put them up on Etsy? Do you, uh, you know, what's your thing? Is there something that you really like about technology? that you use personally. Maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's Twitter, maybe it's Twitter chats. Uh, if there's nothing, that's totally fine. If you're not a big enthusiastic technology user, we t I totally get that. But uh, I would love to know what you like to do personally. Um, my guess is that you guys are going to really be into Pinterest. A lot of teachers and fledging teachers are into Pinterest because there's so many great ideas you can find there. But I may be wrong. So take some time, and we'll also do this bit for icebreaker again another time when we have more people, and uh, we can get to know each other a little bit better. So we are using the Zoom platform right now, and uh, th there are a couple of things I want to mention about Zoom. Uh, there is a chat, and I can, if I, I don't know if I can see it right now. Yes, I can. No, I can't. Um, but you can use Zoom. If I escape from here, um, I can see you. Um, there is a chat and you can ask me any questions you want in there or share any resources that you think would be valuable to people as well. Um, and it, you know, Zoom is pretty easy to use and we're all good, I think, so far with it. Um, about the survey, there is a flyer that's available in our Google Classroom and at this link that you can share with friends and invite them into the speaker series. Uh, we are going to be doing a series of topics that are aligned to the International Society for Technology and Education Standards, which also uh, is known as ISTE. And there are standards for using technology that are recommended for students and teachers and administrators. And it, it, we're gonna align these um, seminars to those standards so that you'll be prepared um, to use educational technology in your classroom. All of our uh, materials will be in a Google Classroom you need to use a personal Gmail address rather than one that's tied to a school district or else you will not be able to get in here, okay? The code and the information that I'm going to give you here is totally correct, but if it's not working for you, you need to make sure you're using a personal Gmail address to get in. Everything will be archived and you'll find more stuff to explore in there um, to help you learn about all the topics we're gonna to be covering in the next few months. So Google Classroom is where we're, where we're housing everything. We decided to use this platform because uh, many of you are going to encounter it if you haven't already in your schools. And we thought it'd be a good opportunity to kind of use it and see how you could use it uh, in a professional development setting. This is the code. You go to classroom.google.com. There's a plus button in the corner and you enter the code to join the class and boom, you'll be in there. Today's objectives for our webinar is to review material from uh, last week's session, which we just did, uh, discuss the ISTE standards for the session, give you an overview of Chrome and a tour of the Chrome Web Store, and maybe doing some brainstorming of favorite extensions if we have time and enough people to do that. Um, the ISTE standards are available here. You should familiarize yourself with them uh, because they're, I, they've been redone for students and teachers in the last two years, and they're up to date and they're um, they're really about being in a, an innovative teacher more than using a spe specific tool. And I think that's a big departure for ISTE and I really, really, really like these standards. So take a look at your leisure. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about things that will help you be a better collaborator and a better, a better facilitator of learning. Uh, so these are the two standards that we're particularly addressing with the content tonight. There are other indicators underneath these standards if you go look at the ISTE standards on their website. Um, so I'm, we're gonna get into Google Chrome right now, but there are a few things I wanna go over first. Um, this is what Chrome is, just as a definition. You can click on the link in the slides 
and it will take you to this definition um, on Computer Hope, which is a website. And it's a, this is a free browser that uh, is, which, it, which is, it's like Safari or Microsoft Explorer or, uh, I don't know, Firefox. And, but it, it, it's, uh, it's what makes up the internal guts to, of Chromebooks. Chromebooks don't have um, all the computer capabilities that a MacBook or some other notebook would have. They just run on the Chrome operating system. And the browser is part of that. So um, it is, it, what's also great about it is that you log into it with your Google account and you can log out and you can log into another device somewhere else on your phone, on your um, tablet, on your computer at home, and you can find everything that you have associated with your Google account and how you've set up Chrome can be exactly the same on another device. So it allows for what we call um, synchronization. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I can tell you about it. There's a search box in Google Chrome called an Omnibox. That's another vocabulary word. Uh, but basically, it, it, you don't need to know too much more than that. But if you want to know more, there's a link there that provides it. Why do you want to, we're, we're going to be talking about extensions, which are going to, there's something that you install in Google Chrome. And why would you want to do this? Well. These extensions will let you become a power user of the browser and become more efficient and productive in your work. It also will be helpful to you to know these so that you can help students figure out what the best extensions are for them if you're in a one-to-one -one Chromebook setting in your particular school. And um, you know, it's. I think once you see these and play around with them, you're going to be really excited. Teachers really love Google Chrome extensions, and it's easy to kind of go hog wild and install lots of them. Uh, so where do you find them? I'm going to show you in a minute, um, but I just want to go over these basics first. You find them in the Google Chrome Web Store, and mo they're all basically free. There's some education ones. There's some product. There's some that will allow you to do screenshots, or ones that allow you to do cool things with YouTube. There's all sorts of different things, and you can search this web store and find them um, by different categories. They're rated. Uh, they're made by third-party people, so they're not necessarily made by Google. Google has made a few of them that are specific to their products, but most of these are made by third-party developers who want you to interact with their web app or, or product somehow. Um, so you're going to find these in the Chrome Web Store, and I'll show you how to install them in a minute. Um, this is a video um, in case you need a review of this. I'm going to show you in two seconds how to do it. It's very easy to install them. Um, and what I want you to kind of keep in mind with this as we're going forward is there's three different things that are confusing with this. There, there are web apps, there are extensions, and there are add-ons in Google, and I'll show you what those are in a second. Um, the other thing I want you to remember is that if you're in a, a G Suite for education school, if your whole school has adopted these tools, your admin can push out extensions to your users. So if you want your classroom, let's say you're in a one-to-one -one Chromebook setting and you want your students to have these extensions that you found valuable, your administrator theoretically could push those out to those, those specific users and on their Chromebooks. So there's a link here that tells you how to do that. I'm not going to go into it tonight because we're really talking about personal productivity. Um, but just be aware that you can do that. Some of these extensions will, will be... Um, will let you do something right from where extensions are installed. Some will do things on certain web pages. So for instance, in YouTube, if I install Edpuzzle's extension, it allows me to grab um, the video and do things with it in Edpuzzle right from YouTube's page. Um, Hootsuite's another one with Twitter. It puts a little, uh, I'll, I'll show you in a sec, it, it, it puts a little tool on your Twitter page that allows you to retweet something in Hootsuite. So just be aware of that. Um, also, when you, look, when you look at my browser in a moment, it's going to look a little different than yours. And that's because I've changed the theme, which is the overall look of my browser. And you can do that too. They are also in the Chrome Web Store. Um, and then you should also know that Chrome uses a lot of your computer's memory. And you may want to use some extensions to suspend tabs so that it's not taking up so much memory. And we'll talk about that a little bit. 
And then finally, I found a really great article last week from Fast Company on um, how on some things that you may not be, know that you're gonna you could do with Chrome, and you might want to take a look at that after this webinar. So um, I'm going to show you this video really quickly, and then I'm going to give you an overview of how this works. These are some extensions that um, are pretty amazing, and uh, I think you'll find useful. Oops, it's not going to the video. There we go. Google Chrome is one of the best web browsers that you can use. The ability to add extensions that can enhance your overall browsing experience is a feature that many people like. If you use another Chromium-based browser, like Opera, or one of my personal favorites, Vivaldi, Chrome extensions can be used with those browsers as well. This is the first episode for this year in the Chrome extension series. If you missed the others, I'll provide a link in the description if you want to check those out too. Today, I will show you 10 Chrome extensions in various categories. These add-ons are all free to use and amazingly useful to make your web browsing easier and more productive. Coming up on Tech Gumbo. <laughs> First up is full page screen capture. There are a lot of screenshot tools that will capture what is visible on your screen. But if you need a screenshot of an entire web page, that process can be tedious. This extension will auto scroll an entire web page and take a screenshot that can be viewed in a single image. Here is how it works. In the upper right, left click on the full page screen capture extension to take a screenshot. When it's done, it will open in a new tab with a screenshot of the entire web page. You can save this image to your computer by selecting download here at the top. If you select options, you can change the default image format. Your choices are PNG and JPEG. Many of you are probably familiar with DuckDuckGo, the search engine that doesn't track you. In addition to searching privately, their privacy essentials extension will force encryption when available block trackers, and assign a privacy grade when you visit a website. For example, when you're on a site, if you click on the Privacy Essentials icon, you can see the privacy grade for that website. They've given this site a D grade, but with the enhancements forced by this extension, it has changed the grade to a B. It shows that it's blocking nine trackers. You can view the trackers being blocked by clicking into it. If you're already a fan of their search engine, Check out DuckDuckGo Privacy Essentials. For those of you that keep asking for an easy to use screen recorder, the Loom video recorder couldn't be any easier to use and it's 100% free. It can record your screen and webcam at the same time with just one click. I'll skip the mini tutorial for this one. If you want to try out Loom, they do provide a tutorial on how to use it right here on the extensions page. If you're like me and you visit multiple sites each day to get your news and information, Panda 5 is a cool extension that puts all your sites in one tab so you don't have to open multiple tabs. When added, it becomes your new homepage in Chrome. I like that it has all the websites organized along the left. Selecting a theme will show articles for that site to the right, which can be easily opened by selecting the article. After you install this extension, there's a brief tutorial that will get you more familiar with the layout. If you have friends or business associates around the world, FoxClocks is useful for showing you the current times in different cities without having to do a search in your favorite search engine. To get the times, just click the FoxClocks icon and you'll see your times listed. To add a new city, just type the name of the city and select it. And it will show up on this list. HoverZoom is a simple extension which works on many websites to zoom in on a picture by hovering your mouse over an image. Having this extension installed reduces the need to open new image tabs or load new pages to view the larger image. Images larger than your screen are automatically resized to fit your screen area. Up next is Super Netflix. Sadly, this is not a way for you to get Netflix for free. This extension is for those of you that watch Netflix on your computer to give you more control. When you click on the Super Netflix icon, you can change several of the defaults, including the bitrate. Leaving it at zero lets Netflix choose the bitrate. You can have it set to automatically skip intros. 
And if you don't like spoilers, you can choose to blur out the next episode thumbnails. If you hate clutter on a web page, Mercury Reader cleans up that page to show you easily readable versions of that web page without all the distractions when you're reading an article. Let's take a look at this page from a popular website. There's a lot going on here. To clean things up, click the Mercury Reader icon here in the upper right. And as you can see, now there's less noise on the screen to distract you. If you use an ad blocker to help you deal with intrusive advertising, my personal favorite is still uBlock Origin. The key reasons I use it is because it's easier on system resources than most of the others, and it blocks most of the ads. And unlike some of the other ad blockers, uBlock Origin does not take payola from advertisers to let their ads slip through. If you want to support a website and enable ads, whitelisting that site is easy. Select the uBlock Origin icon and click on the power button to enable ads for that site. As many of you know, having too many extensions enabled can slow down your browser. The Extensity add-on makes it a lot easier to enable and disable your Chrome extensions when you need them. To quickly enable or disable extensions, select the Extensity icon. Now you'll see your full list of extensions. Those that are disabled will be grayed out. To enable an extension, just left click on it to activate it. If you scroll to the bottom of the list, you can also enable or disable apps that are installed in Chrome. If you have a lot of add-ons installed, Extensity is a must-have extension. Thanks for watching. All links. Are All right, so hopefully that will be helpful to you in kind of getting um, to know Chrome a little bit. I'm going to break out of my slides and give you kind of a, a tour. Hi Beth, welcome. Um, we're glad to have you here. Uh, so this is what my Chrome browser looks like and I'm sure it doesn't, yours doesn't look like mine. Um, the reason mine shows a piece of art here is that I have an extension that, that, that actually serves up every day a different piece of art from Google um, Arts and Culture. So that's why mine looks different. I also have installed a theme that makes it look, um, have that kind of metallic look at the top. So yours is going to look a little bit different. Um, at the top of my browser window, you're going to see a big long box that is called an Omni box, uh, and you search or you type a URL in there. Um, one of the things I, when I started using Chrome that I didn't realize, and I mentioned this last week in our webinar, uh, is if you put your mouse at the end of your Omni bar, you can resize it, and so you can make it small or large. I prefer to have it kind of large. And when I first started using Chrome, I'm like, where did all my extensions go? They weren't where I remember them being. If you see the three dots in the right-hand corner, um, it, is that cool, Beth? Um, there's a lot you can do with this, and I don't even know half the shortcuts you can do with, with uh, Chrome, but there's stuff that you can do, and it, it's awesome. So if you click on the three dots, you're going to see any extensions that you've already installed. So I have a lot here. And that Extensify one that we taught, that was shown in that video, I think I need to install that. Um, so that's, that's kind of the lay of the land. You should also take a look, um, there's a few more things. You should also take a look at the different menus in Chrome, just so that you're familiar with them. They, they generally are the same as you would see in other browsers, um, but just be aware that these exist, okay? Um, so that you know where things are. The most important thing in any, you know, piece of software, I think, is knowing where your preferences are and if you can customize things. So if you go to the Chrome menu, you click on preferences, you're going to see some choices here that will make your life a lot easier. So I can sync between, I can sync all of these things if I want to, or just a few things across all my Google-enabled devices. Uh, so you want to make sure if you sync that if you open up Chrome on your laptop at home, um, it will enable you to open up your Chrome at school on your school computer and you'll have all the same extensions and apps installed there. So that's what that will do. Um, I can manage other people, which I don't know what that means. I guess if I had other people added to this computer, like my kids' accounts, I can manage them. Um, I can import bookmarks from other um, 
other places uh, for, you know, if you still use bookmarks on your browser. Um, you can also, you can see here that my, the name of my theme is black carbon and silver metal. And I can use I can reset it to the default if I don't like that. Um, and I can also set my homepage and do all sorts of different things here um, in order to kind of make it my own. Notice down here on startup, I can have my, my, my Chrome continue where I la last was or open up a specific set of pages or page. I have it going to Google Arts and Culture and that's why that piece of art pops up every time I open up a browser window. So your settings are important and they're again, they're under your Chrome menu. And uh, hi Virginia, welcome. And, um, and so that's under your preferences, under Chrome. Right. I'm going to mute Virginia just because um, I'm going to keep going here. And, if, and we'll do, we'll do Q&A in a little bit. So uh, this is your Omnibox. Your extensions will be over here to the right somehow. Probably you can shorten your Omnibox if you want to by hovering over at the end of the Omnibox and moving it back and forward. You'll see a little crosshairs sign pop up that allows you to do that. Um, and then remember your preferences under the Chrome menu. Okay, so that's kind of basic stuff. Now, um, if you want to control your your, um, your 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 extensions that you've installed, another important place to know in your browser is down here where it says "More Tools," and this has changed. I don't know how when it, you know in the last few months, but you can manage your extensions here, and I don't like how this changes come out. Um, you can search for your extension, so I can search for, you know, something, and, and at first it doesn't pop up. So you can install, I can remove things that are, that have Google in them. Um, so this Checker Plus, I don't like this one, I'm gonna remove it. I, can, I have it installed, I can look at the details, I can disable it, or I can just remove it altogether, okay? And it's gonna take me to the developer's website, and, you want some feedback and I'm not going to give it to them. So anyway, this is where you manage your extensions and you have to search for something for them to pop up, which is a little weird. You can also go to the keyboard shortcuts and manage, you can actually um, configure your keyboard to do certain things with the extensions that you have involved. So just, you don't have to do anything with this right now, but just be aware that under more tools is where you manage extensions. Um, they've redesigned it. It's a little different than it used to be, but it's here. And I'll, I'll also tell you how to, to get rid of extensions um, another way as well. So I'm going to show you, these are my extensions, and I'll, I'll go over what some of my favorites are in a little while. But if there's one I don't want, um, or I want to configure it somehow, I use the control key on my computer. It may be different on yours. It may be a different key. And I click on it and I can remove it from Chrome, okay? Or go to my Manage Extensions page. So just be aware that probably the easiest and the quickest way, if you look at there's an extension that you've installed that you don't like and you're not, or you're not using, um, control click on one of these will help you um, control it. Okay, so that's kind of the lay of the land with this. Now, um, I'm gonna go to the Chrome store and it's, uh, I just Google Chrome Web Store and it comes up. Um, yeah. Um, I believe Brittany has a problem with her. With oh, I, thanks, Beth. I'm having a little trouble. It's automatically rerouting me to my school web page instead of my actual Google Gmail. How to fix that? So, oh, so are you? So my guess is. So here's my here's my Gmail, Brittany. Um, you can you can log into Chrome with multiple accounts and not have to um, not have to, to log in to you know multiple times. So over here in my Gmail, and I don't know if this is going to solve your problem or not. Thank you, Beth, for pointing this out. Under um, you can see that my daughter's accounts here, my other accounts are here. I can add an account you know, from another Gmail address that I have. I can also switch back and forth between these. 
So if I want to go look at my global ed events, Gmail, I just click on that and it switches to that account. It keeps me logged in to both, actually. Does that help you, Brittany? Do you have that ability to switch back and forth? Uh, yes, I actually just did that. Thank you so much. Does, did that solve it? Yeah, I did. Oh, awesome. Great. Yay. Woohoo. Thank you for, for asking. That's a really good question. Thank you. Um, and yeah, some of this stuff is not like wildly obvious. And um, if, you know, if you have somebody available to, to, to answer the question, it makes things a lot easier. Right? Okay. So here's the Chrome Web Store. And um, so there is, there's one other thing I want to mention. So these are extensions. Okay. And if I click um, on the left hand side, it's uh, chrome.google.com. If I click on this side, you can see all the different um, extension, these different themes that I can pick to make my computer look fancy. Some of them are not very appealing, if you ask me, but, um, and you can sort them by, you know, highly rated ones, um, so on and so forth. Those are themes. If you click here above that, these are extensions, okay? And then there's something else that you might find more confusing. There are also apps. And usually um, you'll see some, a little waffle that looks like this in your Google tools. You click on it. These are apps. And apps are just shortcuts to web-based tools that you can use. And what they did, um, they got rid of, they had marketplace apps. It was really interesting. Um, in the Google Chrome store, they used to have apps in here. And I want to say six months ago, maybe, they got rid of them. And they weren't, maybe because it was confusing to people, but essentially there were shortcuts to websites, to like Muzella or other, you know, websites you might commonly use. Because if you're on a Chromebook, uh, it just made it a lot easier. They got rid of that. I don't know why. I don't know what the logic was with that. So um, they used to be, you know, if you're in in Google somehow, um, they used to be in this launcher here. And now they just have, um, they just have, uh, it seems, it, it, it looks like to me, I could be wrong on this. They just have Google oriented tools in here. And um, it's kind of fun because it is a, it is a nice way to, um, to quickly add basically a shortcut, a shortcut to a website. So these are, you know, they, they basically, these are all the Google different tools here that you can look through. So those are apps. Now, in Google Docs, Slides, and Spreadsheets, and Google Drive, there is, um, there's something uh, that's even more confusing. <laughs> these are called add-ons, and you'll see, uh, you'll see something in a Google Doc, or in your slides, or in Sheets, that looks like this, and you can see I've installed tons of them. Um, and they add functionality, like this one allows you to do a rubric as a teacher, or this one allows you to do rhyming. It's, you know, crazy fun stuff. Um, and so you can add more functionality to these Google products as well, but they're not extensions. They're called add-ons. So to get, and we're going to talk about them more next week, but just so you know the difference between these, you, you click on add-ons, and the add-ons have their own little store within each of these tools. And I see that there's a question, so let me go to the chat. I can find it. There it is. Um, are you guys good? All right. Virginia, Brittany, are you guys okay? Or did I just, I, I'm late. To, okay, I think we're good. If you're good, if you're not good, tell me in the chat. Okay. So these are add-ons. They're in Google Docs. They're in, um, they're in Google Slides if you create your own deck. Um, some of these are free. Some of them are not. Like, for instance, um, I, I installed this one called Icons by um, Noun Project so I could jazz up my slides. And it's not free, so I paid for a pro subscription to get these because I really like this. Um, it lets you find pictures um, and then you can insert into your slides. So these are, again, third-party, um, there's a little icon, I'm going to get rid of it. These are third-party developed tools that add, you know, that put Google, Google Docs, spreadsheets, 
or sheets they're called now, and slides on steroids. The, there are also um, add-ons too, and this is, I think, not so obvious, um, in Google Drive. So if you're using Google Drive, and again, we'll talk about this more next week, just be aware that there's under the new menu, you'll see I have lots of, I have lots of add-ons for Google Drive um, at the very bottom, which you can't see right now because something's covering it. It will say get add-ons. Okay. So just be aware there's extensions, there's add-ons and there's apps. And there's an article that I posted in Google Classroom that explains those if you're completely lost. But I just want to make sure that we knew about that. So, okay, so let's go back to Chrome. Let me close a few of these um, windows. I'm using Command-W to, to close these tabs. And remember, these kind of take up more memory. Um, i close out my email. Um, in your browser, and it might slow things down for you a little bit. So there are some extensions that actually will let you suspend these different tabs. Um, if you are not uh, familiar with, with um, how to kind of power use a browser. Um, I open up these tabs by clicking here in the upper right hand corner, it's new tab, or you can do command T, and it may be control T on your computer, um, and you'll, another browser uh, tab will open. Um, you can also move these around, you can open them up in separate windows, there are a lot of cool power tricks with that too, but I'm not really getting into that tonight. Okay. So here we are back at the Chrome Web Store. These are extensions. And so one of the ones that I really liked from that video I showed you was Extensity. And I really need that because I've got 5 million extensions. So I'm going to type in Extensity and search the Chrome Web Store. And there it is. And I can click on it and then get more information about it. So here's an overview, there are reviews. It looks like people love this. 800 people have reviewed it and there's five stars, so that's always a good thing. Um, and it gives you information about you know, your the privacy policy and all that stuff there. Um, and some other apps that you might be interested in as well. So um, I like this app. I know I need it because I need to manage my, my extensions a little bit better. So I'm gonna add this extension to Chrome. It's going to ask me for permission and I'm going to say add extension and it tells you the privacy settings here which you know you know pay attention to this stuff in this day and age you really want to kind of know what these third-party apps are going to be able to do so if you don't like it you can always cancel it sometimes I've tried to install things that Google hasn't approved yet and Google will send me a message saying hey we haven't approved this yet Do you really want to do it and I appreciate that so just be aware of that so I add the extension and boom, it gives me a little notification, and it puts it up here in the right-hand side of my browser window, okay? So let's see what happens when I click on it. So it shows me, ooh, it shows me all my different extensions, and I can turn them on and off. Oh, I love this. This is like worth the price of admission, isn't it? So I can turn them on and off as I need them or don't need them. And they're listed in alphabetical order. I love that, okay. So this is why this is important. Um, so otherwise, if I don't use that, I want to keep that one there. I can, I can drag it and put it up front if I want to. The reason I want to use it is look how many extensions I have. And I'm sure I'm not the only person that has 5 million of these out there. I, um, I think I need to zoom out here a little bit. So when I click on here, you can see that I have lots and lots of them, right? And uh, I can't always, I don't always recognize them by their icons if I don't use them all the time. If I hover over these, it tells me the name of them, okay? Um, but that's not really efficient. I use um, the Evernote one a lot and I'll show you what that does in a second and I use the Padlet one a lot so I recognize those icons but the other ones I'm not quite sure I've installed so many of them this doesn't work for me organizationally so I'm going to um, instead of looking at this menu to try and find what I'm looking for I'm going to go here so let me show you some of my favorite ones and you might want to write these down I also have some of them in the slides um, 
so that you can see how they work. Look, oh, this is kind of cool too. At the top, I can, what does this do? Wait, oh, is it me I'm turning it off? Oh, I turn everything else off? Oh, I can turn off extensity if I want to, it looks like, with this slider at the top of the window. Switch enabled, extensions off, click again to switch back. Okay, come back. There we go. Okay. Then this, what does this little thing do? Home extensions, profiles, I guess that's for your different Google accounts. Uh, there's some options in here. Let it go. Uh, and the options are not very exciting for me. Um, so there's some, there's a little bit of control over these things. You can, it looks like you can also share it out on Twitter and on Facebook um, and bookmark it if you want to. So let me show you some of my favorite ones that you might find useful right away. Um, the first one is one click timer. And it's on. And why, so I want to go to it. Why does it not let me go to it? I just, I don't want to do that. I don't want to manage it. I want, I'm just going to, I know where it is here, so I'm going to pull it up until I figure this out. Um, or at least I did know where it was. One quick timer, where'd you go? All right, let me just go through. If I, I'll, I'll find it as we go through there. Means is not as great as I thought it is. So I thought you click here, click here, it turns it off, but how do I actually activate it? Hmm. That's not useful. Okay, so here's a few of them that I find really, really, really useful. Um, first of all, this one is works with Google Classroom, share to classroom. So if I want to um, share this particular Padlet with you, I surf to the Padlet website, and I can select um, which classroom setup I have, which uh, here's the one that we are using. And I can push this to you um, as an assignment, as a question, or as an announcement. And this is pretty cool. So you select what you want it to be, make an announcement, share with your class. This is a... An example, and um, and you should if you're a member of our Google Classroom, you're going to see that announcement. Okay, so that's one. So if you're surfing around, you find a website or an article or something that you want to share with your class. Share Classroom is like boom, bada bing, bada boom. It goes right to them. So that's one that I think is particularly useful. Um, I'm also a big fan of, and I showed this last week, but a lot of you were not here last week. I use Evernote for saving articles, and it's searchable. Um, I think there's a free version of it. I pay for a, a bigger version of it. Um, and so, for instance, I do social media for Edmodo, and I'm finding I surf for articles and things like that that will be useful to them. And it will bookmark it in here, or I can save the whole text. And it's searchable through the search box up here. It's awesome. And Moto, or I mean, uh, Evernote is really great. There's also an awesome app for your phone. It's like the Swiss knife of, of, of tools. So what I do is um, I will go to a website. So let's say I have, I think I have Muzella open here yet. Let me open it up again. Undo. We open close tab. So here I am at Newzilla's website, which has, if you haven't seen this, has, has lots of great content for kids. Some of it's free, some of it's not. And let's say I want to uh, bookmark this uh, or save this article for my students. Uh, I don't want it pro right now, but anyway, I can go here, click on my Evernote icon, which looks like an elephant, and it clips it as a bookmark, as an article, as a simplified article, as a full page, as a bookmark, as a screenshot, whatever I want. So if I just want to do a screenshot of this, I can do that. And what happens is I save it to my notebook in Evernote. 
and it comes back. Hey, Wanda, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. How about you? Good, 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 good. We're in the middle of playing with extensions, so uh, okay. we'll try to get you up to speed, okay? Okay, thanks. I'm going to mute you just for the time being, and then we'll do Q&A in a sec, okay? Perfect. All right, so, so that's, um, that's the, the, that one I use all the time. Um, what other ones do I find to be useful? Um, the new Zella is like going to town for me. Let me click off of there. Um, there's Hootsuite for doing Twitter. Uh, oh, this one I use all the time, Bitly. So Bitly, um, what it does is it makes a shortened link. Let's say you, you're working particularly with kids who uh, maybe can't, you know, access a URL very easily, or it's tedious to type out some crazy long link, um, you can, uh, it, it, this is called a link truncator. So Bitly will shorten the link. You can go to Bitly's website and do it, but that takes more time. Um, but if you use the extension, it's gonna shorten things for you. So for this Padlet, um, it gave it the address of bit.ly slash blah, 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 blah. Um, I can customize that. If I click in here and say, you know, Lucy's Padlet for Rio, and um, at the bottom I save it, there's a button for saving. That's the link for it now. And I can put it in, for instance, the chat here, and boom, you can go to that link and it will, it will be a lot quicker for you. So I love, 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 love that one I use all the time. Bitly is probably one of the ones that um, I find the most useful. The other one that I really like is Padlet. So let's say I go to, um, it makes things saving to a Padlet, like I, we've used Padlet to make introductions and do icebreakers and whatever. Um, this allows me to do a sticky note on the fly right into Padlet. So here's Edutopia, which is one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite education websites. So, um, so let's say I want to save um, this this article for you guys in a Padlet. Um, I go to the web, I go to the article that I want to save. I click on Padlet's icon, which looks like kind of like I don't know what it is, a crown or a piece of origami. I don't know. Click on it. It says post to Padlet, and it typically shows you all of your Padlets. And I'm logged in, so I don't know why it's not doing it. There it goes. Okay, just needed a minute. So here is our Padlet for tonight. There should be a TED Talk too. One here. Oh, here it is. And I'm going to post it into that Padlet that I created for tonight. So when I go back to Padlet, and I go to that particular one, you're going to see a sticky note that contains a link to that article. So here are my awesome Padlets, which I use all the time. And here's that Edutopia article that I uh, that I that I saved to it through that extension. So you can surf and do research. You can have kids research, you know, different sites and that sort of thing. Use that Padlet extension and save it to a group Padlet, and then everybody's research is in one place. Or um, and actually, you probably can't see this right now because I did something with this. I did, uh, I was going to play kind of a fun, show you a cool use of Padlet. Um, in Padlet, you can make things appear. Uh, afterwards, you can moderate things. And what I did is I made this moderated and was going to make, make everything show up at, at, um, at once. And... Anyway, I'll figure out what I did later. It's somewhere around here. I need to change it. So that's another extension that I love. Um, you can save things right to Google Drive with this one. It's called Save to Google Drive. You can save things to Pinterest with this extension if you're a Pinterest fan. Uh, there are lots of different ones. Um, I use Awesome Screenshot a lot to take screenshots and save them. Um, and... Let me, take, let me show you my list of them. That might be more helpful and let you play with these. And then I want to ask you 
if you have any that you would add to this. So these are some of the ones that I recommend. And you might want to try one or two out right now. Um, awesome screenshot will give you um, will give you uh, will get, you can take screenshots of different things of portions of websites or the whole page. I believe that there's some pro features to it that are worth it. Like I think you can do screencasting with it if you pay for it. But for the most part, you don't really need to. This new one, um, this is a new one to me, library extension. This shows me if I'm looking at a book on Amazon or someplace, it will show me if it's available in my library, in my, um, in my hometown library. It's wild. Uh, the great suspender will suspend your tabs, but then you can click on it, and then it will pop back up. Um, Padlet and Bitly, I already showed you. I showed you Evernote. I showed you Shared a Classroom. Digo, I use that for bookmarking things, but that's a paid service to a certain extent. Um, convert to, to text to peach, speech for special ed kids. Highlight text, and then it reads it out loud to them. Um, G Suite training is, is built-in text support. Um, all of these are really cool. If you're a math teacher... Equate.io is one that you might want to look at. Uh, Soundtrap is for making music. It's kind of like GarageBand, but for the web. So these are some of the ones that I think are pretty cool. Grammarly, I could, never, I could not live without. So what I want you to do right now is uh, play with some of those. Go to the Chrome Web Store. How much time do we have left? We have like 10 minutes. Um, and I want you to either f install a couple of these or um, search for some other ones in the Chrome Web Store and let us know which ones you find. So just for a minute or two, or if you already are doing this, um, in the chat or on the mic, why don't you tell us which ones you have been using? Or is this new to you? Somebody grab the mic and tell me what your experience has been. Uh, Lucy, this is Beth. I, um, there's actually, Rio has an extension. Um, <gasps> really? And, but I use Grammarly all the time. I Isn't that great? Used, yes, I love Grammarly. Helps me out a lot. I've learned a lot, too. Yeah. Um, but I do have a question for you. Yeah. So how do I get to the Google Chrome store? Do I just put in google.chrome.store or? I just type in, you don't have to type in the whole HTTP stuff, so chrome.google.com. Okay. It pops up for me. Oops, I spelled Google wrong. That's always a good thing. So Chrome, Chrome dot google dot com and press return or google uh um oh that's not it i thought it was google chrome store let's, let's google that's where you would download the browser if you don't have it on your computer so the chrome web store well, is, so i do have a browser so how do i find it in the browser so go to the omnibox and sometimes they also, um, I have too many windows in the way. Let me see if I can get some of these things out of the way. Uh, sometimes in Chrome, it may do this for you. Um, it may, like, so on my Google homepage, for instance, so I'll just go to plain old Google. Um, you'll see this waffle. You may see this waffle somewhere. Um, in your browser, it depends on your, in a Chromebook, it might be down in the left hand or right hand corner. Um, I'm using a Mac right now with the Chrome browser installed. Um, and if you click on the waffle, the Chrome web store will be in here as well. Usually. If it's not, you can go here and get it. I mean, like that's the really the long winded way to do it. Um, but I usually, I just go, I just, I just Google the Chrome web store because it, it comes, that's the quickest way for me to do it. So it's chrome.google.com slash web store. That's the, the link. I'll put it in the chat just to make it easy. So um, Beth, what does the Rio, what does the Rio extension do? Um, you know what? I, let me, I don't know. I, it's on my, I have it on my computer at work, not here. 
Okay. Um, so it just basically, I believe, is just a shortcut, like to. So that might be an app. To learn kind that, of thing. That that it may be that, and I, I most extensions do something functionally like different. Um, let me give you an example. So, and some of them are in that. Some of them are in this menu and don't seem to do anything. By the way, um, so what I'm thinking the real thing might be just a shortcut. It might be a web app. That's what I'm thinking. But um, I could be wrong. So let's say I go to um, um, you know a video. Why you can't divide by zero? This is you know this is a TED Ed video. Um, notice in YouTube, you probably wouldn't have this button that says edit with Edpuzzle. What this does, I've installed the extension for Edpuzzle. And this is a great tool, by the way, if you're flipping your classroom or doing a lot with video and you want to make it more interactive. Edpuzzle lets you put um, certain stopping places in a video or a quiz into a video, all the sorts of cool things. So I can take this video and put it with this extension into Edpuzzle, and then I can I can edit it, I can add an audio track to it, I can add audio notes to it, I can make quizzes in it, you know, by using that video. And, it, and Edpuzzle, I think, gives you, like, maybe you can do three videos for free, and then they want you to pay. Um, but if you're using a lot of video in your classroom, particularly back if you're teaching um, distance, you know, online, this might be a tool that you would really love. But it will let you... So what it does is it lets you harvest that video into Edpuzzle, and then you can make your edits on top of, of the video to make it more interactive for your students. And Edpuzzle also has um, kind of classroom management fe features, like you can, you can you know, have your students subscribe to a video, and it's, it's hard to explain, but there's some management with students' um, capabilities if you get the educator version of it. Mm, very cool. Is that cool? So some of them do that. Um, there's another example, and then if you if you saw my you see how my YouTube the volume is going up and down here. Yeah. I'm scrolling on my toolbar, and that's that's an extension. So I can I I don't have to use the buttons on my computer. I can on my trackpad I can go up and down and change the volume of the YouTube video at will, and that was um, from these extensions, which are called YouTube Magic, I think. And it lets me, or maybe, yep, yeah, it's magic actions. And it lets you do all these wild things in YouTube. So that, it doesn't work in the, you know, up here in the right-hand corner so much as it works right in YouTube. Um, another one that's kind of crazy, too, a couple on Twitter. Um, I'm a big Twitter person. And you'll see a couple things on mine. Um, oh, look, there's an Arizona uh, tweet. So, um, so here's here's some tweets, right? The number that's next to somebody's name is from a website called Clout, and they have an extension. And Clout gives you it's K L O U T. It kind of gives you a rating of somebody's influence on Twitter. So, um, you know, somebody like Barack Obama is going to be like 99, right? But you know, this teacher is like 55. That's probably more normal for more you know normal people. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea of their influence, and I do a lot of social media stuff, so it's kind of helpful to me. But the one that's more interesting is um, there's a um, I have Hoot I have Hootsuite the the extension for Hootsuite installed. So if I want to retweet this, and I it's kind of redundant, um, I can retweet it there, but I can also click on here, and it'll pop up in a separate window in Hootsuite. And I can retweet it, and, and there's a little bit more functionality to it. I can post it to other social media accounts and that sort of thing. So for me, being a social media nerd, um, that's really helpful to me. So it's important to understand that you know, my point being is that some of these tools, the, I, what you're supposed to do with it is not always obvious. Um, and so you may, you may want to play around with them a little bit at first. Um, I'm trying to think what other ones. There's some screencasting ones that are on my list that are awesome. This one I was playing with earlier. Um, this is Screencastify, I think. Yep. And you can record from a tab, your desktop, your from your webcam. So 
I don't know what that's going to do right now since I have the video going. Um, you can show a, a, a preview window. Um, and then you can record whatever you're doing. Three, two, Ooh. one. So it's recording me right now. I don't really want it to do it. I'm, I'm double recording right now, the webinar and this. And I can what is that called, that one? So screen, it's recording screen. me right now. Oh, that's annoying. I don't really want it to do it. It's screen, Screencastify. And let's see, I think it might be in the list here. Yeah, here it is, Screencastify. Um, so there's a lot here. The one that I was telling Brittany about earlier, because she, she came early, is Read and Write for Chrome. And what that does is it puts a toolbar in. This is particularly for kids that have issues with, um, you know, probably dyslexic kids or, you know, kids with writing issues and that sort of thing, or even adults. Like, they have, um, my daughter goes to a small college in Iowa, and she's part of a um, kind of a special program with kids with learning issues. And they, they train them on how to use Read and Write. It's actually called Read and Write Gold. And I don't know if it's a full version of this or not. Um, let me show you this. I read and write gold. And I believe it's a paid for product. I mean, it's just called read and write now. Um, I, there's a lot of advanced stuff with this that I don't know. But at my daughter's um, college, they train the kids how to use this so that they can be, um, you know, they can work on their, their reading and writing. So there is some sort of fee. But I could have sworn that there is an educator price for it, or they made it completely free for education. Um, or this extension may be just the free thing. I don't, I don't quite get it. So if I'm in a Google Doc right here, I, I have Read and Write installed, and it shows up as a, um, I think I have to activate it under my extensions here. Well, maybe not. I don't. It just is here. Um, it pops up, and this little toolbar comes down that gives you more functionality. So right now, um, I can highlight some text, and then it will read aloud. Homework in our Google Classroom. Respond to the following prompts. One. So if you have kids that... How are you currently fostering digital... So if you have kids that need some help with, um, you know, with a text or something, I'm thinking of kids who are dyslexic or whatever, this would be really helpful to them. It also lets you, um, you know, highlight a word. I want to stop that stuff. Citizenship. Um, I can highlight a word, and there's a built-in dictionary and a picture dictionary. There's the picture dictionary, which there's a pic. And I wonder if you can take these pictures and put it in here. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, and there's a regular dictionary too, but you have to no highlight. No valid word selected. Let me highlight the word. I want to go there. I want the picture dictionary there, and there's a dictionary window. So there are lots of things you can do with this for kids with special needs, um, regardless of age. It just adds a little bit more functionality. And I have not played around with every feature in here. Oh, there's a vocabulary list you can do. This is wild. So this is one that I, I think is particularly valuable, and I don't think you have to pay for it. So I would recommend you taking a look at that. Um, um, yeah, and I, I think, I think as, as instructors, um, Beth and Virginia, I think that I think one of the things is you want to play around with some of these and make suggestions to your students. I think that's brilliant. And um, or is part of your materials list at the beginning of every semester, you have a list of recommended um, extensions so that they can you know, choose what works for them. I think it's worth the investment, and the Chrome Web Store is a little overwhelming. And, and so to expect kids to go in there and find it on their own, I don't know if they're gonna do that. Um, my, my son who's 15 and a freshman in high school, he has, he and his friends have found ones, but they tend to find things that are kind of silly and, um, and, and they're not necessarily useful to them. Uh, there are a lot of silly ones in here, um, by the way. So let, let's say I go to the New York, I just want to show you one funny one. Um, so you go to a website like New York Times, and uh, this looks like a heart on my website. It replaces every picture 
with a picture of Ryan Gosling and saying, hey, girl, or at least it's supposed to. It doesn't look like it's doing it. It's hilarious. It used to be hilarious. So there are a lot of ones that are kind of, you know, really no purpose. They're just, they're just oh, there. That's funny. Yeah. It, I don't know. It's not doing it. I don't know why it's not doing it, but it, it's supposed to take everybody's picture on here and replace it with um, Ryan Gosling. And I know that there are other ones that do similar things with other people. Oh, maybe here it's, it's working now. Maybe. Is that, is that silly? Uh, yeah. I think it's doing it, but it's doing it really slowly. Maybe the New York Times is not the right place to do it. Anyway, um, I just thought you guys would find that amusing. Um, do any of you have, do you have any extensions that you recommend? Okay, I have one that's not, it's not educational, that's but funny. I like, it's Honey. Oh, yeah. Honey, it, like, we'll find any coupon you want for anything. So let's say, let me, where should I go? Uh, I like, I was just looking at J. Jill catalog. Uh, let's see if I can find J. Jill. I don't think this will do it, but we'll see if it will work. Uh, so we go to a website for shopping. And I thought I had it installed. Isn't it yellow? It has a little H. It's an H and it, mine's in a gray box, actually. Right. See, like, especially in the I really hate these icons and how little they are and how you can't see anything. I have one that's similar. This is Invisible Hand. So you see across my browser how it has 30% off web, uh, site-wide. And, yeah. and then you click on this and it says five coupons. And then you can try these out. You can copy these codes. So that's awesome. It's a similar thing. And there's another one. Um... There's another one for coupons. There's an invisible hand. It's a little green thing. Uh, there's another shopping one that I've, I used to use a lot. Amazon has one. That's just a shortcut. That doesn't do anything very exciting. Um, what else? What other ones have you found or have you used? Fun or not fun or you know, work-wise or personal? Hi, this is Jenny. I don't... You know, I just keep learning about these, but I don't feel like I'm actually using them. So that's why I want to, like, actually start using them. Yeah! You know what I mean? Like, I hear about them, like, oh, that's neat, but I don't, like, go and use it. So that's what I have to start doing, like, you've done and save them, so then I can go use them. So maybe you need to find one that, like, maybe there's a task that you do all the time that's really repetitive or something that you're going to use on a regular basis. So I, I would choose, I would like work on extensions like the bit.ly one. Like I use that all the time, you know, to make a shortcut for a website. Uh -huh. um, or like, I'll be like, Oh yeah, I've heard of that. And I'm like, why don't I use it? I, yeah. And I think if there is a little bit of forcing yourself to do it. I, I agree, but I've, I've gotten used to it. Um, I use Digo all the time. I bookmark stuff all the time. So what this does is, um, instead of using the bookmarks that are built into the browser, I use a Digo website. And you can, you can do annotations with it and, and screenshots also. Uh, but I have, for like, for like 10 years, I've been using this. So I'll bookmark something here. I can make it private or public. I can add tags to it. And then, um, and then save it to my bookmarks to go back to later. And it's all searchable. So... I'm kind of a nut with this, but this is what my Digo looks like. Um, I also have an ex I also have a, a thing that also lets me bookmark things that I favored on Twitter. So you'll see some stuff here. Like this is a tweet that I favorited. I, did, I didn't actually bookmark it. Um, and you can see how it's tagged Twitter favorites. So these are some things that I've bookmarked, um, you know, over time, and then I can search for it. Like, I taught a class in professional development at National Lewis University last, this winter, and I tagged everything for the class with a hashtag so that they, my students could look in and find um, some tools that they wanted to, to, or ideas for their professional development projects that we were working on. I can give you the link to it if you want to look at it. So, Brittany, what does uh, WiseScan do? Let's take a look at what Wisecan is doing. I'm curious. I, I, enough of me talking. I know it's time for us to go too, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. 
So this does, ooh, reading levels. Awesome, I'm adding that one. So you can check the reading level of online content for 16, 18 year olds. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm gonna add that extension. Um, by the way, in the Chrome store, there's also, um, you used to be able to sort by category, but they had a whole education section. Let me see where that went. So here on the front page, go to categories, go to whatever category you want. There used to be an education one. That's annoying. Um, so if I go recommended for me, these are the ones that they, there's Honey. Um, a lot of people love OneNote from Microsoft, which is similar to Evernote. Um, To-do lists. That's not a very exciting list for me. Accessibility, let's see what fun is. The games. Probably I'm thinking the most useful stuff is going to be under productivity. And you might want to sort them by how they're rated just to get rid of some. There are some in here that are not that great. So make sure that you, if you're just browsing these, that you, um, you, uh, you sort them a little bit. Um, finally, I'm going to, let me go back to our Google Classroom. The slides for this are in there so you can get to them. If you haven't joined our classroom, um, I'll put up a slide for that in a second. But I also put some resources in for tonight, and there's a woman um, named Casey Bell who does a lot of Google work. And she, um, there's a list here of, of, um, that she produced of education-related uh, Chrome apps and extensions. So if you're looking for more stuff, that are recommended. She has like this whole database um, that you can look through and see what might be useful to you. So that's listed in the resources in our Google Classroom. Okay, I know that we're kind of going over time here, so I don't want to um, keep you longer than we have agreed to be here. Um, let me go back to my slides and kind of wrap up here, and then if you want, I'll stick around and talk to you if you, if you want to. Um, your homework this week is to find five extensions and put them um, in our Google Classroom. If I haven't set up a, a assignment for it, I will. Um, if you're not familiar with Google Classroom, um, this, these are some directions on how to do it. You go to classroom.google.com, and there's a plus button in the right-hand corner and you have to enter a code for it. It will not work if you're using your Rio Salado email. You need to use a personal Gmail address. So um, make sure that you are using your own Gmail address. It's because the way your Google Apps Administrator has set things up, he hasn't allowed people to collaborate in classrooms, in Google Classrooms outside of your school's domain. So just use your own one and you won't run into any problems. The code is correct. You'll get in there if you followed the directions. Um, next week, we're going to be talking um, about managing student work. And basically, I'm going to be, it's a lot of Google Apps stuff that I'm going to be talking about. But we'll go into add-ons and there'll be some advanced things that you may not know. Like, I think everybody thinks, oh, I know, I know Google Docs. Yeah, but let's let's talk about some advanced things you could do with it if if you're um, if you're if you're comfortable with it. So that's what we're going to be talking about. That we'll talk a little bit about how to how to turn things in, how to grade things, that sort of thing. Um, so we're meeting every um, week through May, um, May thirtieth. Uh, I may be switching that date. We'll see how I do. I'm going to be traveling a lot about that time. Um, but right now we're on schedule and nothing's changing. But if I do change things, I will let you know. Um, feel free to go if you need to go. If you want to stick around and share or just chat, I'm here. Um, but thanks for coming, everyone. And the recording of this will be up in um, Google Classroom tonight.